Hey everyone, and happy Easter. We're so glad you could join us online today. We're so thankful that we get to still celebrate this day together. It may not be physically, but we get to use technology to be able to still serve you guys and connect with you guys and still, uh, to still celebrate the resurrection of Jesus today. I got a few familiar faces with me this morning. I got Chris and Liz. Y'all probably usually see on Sunday morning. Say hey, you guys. Hey guys, happy Easter. So excited to connect with you today. Hey guys, happy Easter. I'm, I'm equally excited to connect with you guys. And while we're talking about connected, let me re connecting, let me remind you of this. You can connect with us on Facebook. You can connect with us on Instagram. You can connect with us on YouTube. You can go to the CLC app and connect with us. You can even go on our website and it'll connect you to us. But the main thing is we want you to stay connected to us and we want to stay connected to you. Absolutely. And don't forget, we also have our kids service directly after our 10 a.m. service on Sunday mornings. So make sure your kids don't miss out on our kids ministry service. Also, if you want activities for your kids during the week, go to our CLC Spring app. If you don't have it, download it. Go there. We have a kids section on there. If you click on it, there are activities for your kids to do during the week. Keep them busy, keep them going, and to, and to learn even more a little bit. So make sure to download, download our app, check it out, and click on the kids section. Yeah, Brittany, thank you so much for mentioning the kids. I know that as we all transition and get accustomed to our new normal, our kids are also going through the same thing. And so we want to make sure that we are catering to our kids and making sure that we keep them connected as well. And so if you have a student that's in grades 6 through 12, we want to make sure that they are watching every Wednesday night at 730 on Instagram. We are trying to stay as close to what a Wednesday night service would look like online. So we have our very own Matt Rancheran uh, leading us in worship and I am doing a little devotional for them after that. And then on Thursday nights we get together and we do a Zoom call so that way the students are able to come together like we would on a Wednesday and be in a small group and be able to chat with one another about what we're going through. So again, follow us on CLC Student Life on Instagram. Get connected with us. That's every Wednesday at 7:30. Hey, and I want to also remind you guys, we are still doing Saturday morning prayer. I know Pastor brought this to us some years ago where we started doing Saturday morning prayer. And just because we're not meeting in a physical building, we're still praying every Saturday morning at nine o'clock. Karen and her team are on Facebook Live and they are praying. So you can send in your prayer request and make sure your request is known and we'll be praying over those requests. So if you want to join in, our prayer team is doing prayer every Saturday morning at nine o'clock on Facebook Live. Yeah, so I want to know what service are you watching? I know we have three services that you can pick from. We've got the 10 a.m. If you're an early bird, uh, we've got 12 o'clock and then we've got the 6 p.m. So let us know in the comments, what service are you tuning into? And if you are watching our 10 o'clock service, I know that gives us a little bit of an opportunity to have a slower morning because we don't have to get dressed and go to church. So some of you might be watching with your pajamas on. Some of you might be eating cereal and watching the service. So if that's you, we want to see your pictures. Uh, drop them in the comments, upload them to your social media and use the hashtag hashtag I am CLC fam because we'd love to see your pictures we'd love to repost them so tag us let us know uh, how you're watching also um, it's Easter and usually on Easter I know I love to dress up I love to get cute outfits for my kids and Chris I see you're looking fly this morning well hey, hey listen listen Karen. I'm gonna do y'all a favor Liz and Brittany right. I'm gonna teach y'all proper Easter online dress code so you want to make sure you got a nice crisp shirt on. Okay. Make sure your jacket is nice and pressed and looking good. And then you want to have on a pair of Lakers shorts. <laughs> <laughs> already, there you go. I'm already one step ahead of you. I'm already uh, rocking my brother's basketball shorts. You just can't see them. <laughs> it's only you know showing this part so but i know you know uh, you know a lot of people experience when to dress up on easter and dress nice and we've experienced but i think we've all experienced easter you know a little differently i know we've all our pastors kids and pks and we've all kind of you know <laughs> hashtag pk probs <laughs> you know experience easter in a different way and i think you know one of my experiences you know growing up is not in a bad way, but being voluntold to kind of do things instead of volunteering for them. So, for example, last year for Easter, we were doing our Easter egg, uh, egg drop from the helicopter. And 
I'm actually scared to death of flying. Like it's one of my biggest fears. It just always has been. I don't like it. And they volunteered me to go up there and drop the eggs out of the helicopter. And not only am I just riding in the helicopter, which I'm scared of, I'm hanging out halfway out the door, <laughs> blowing eggs out for all these people. And they're but smiling and waving and looking at me like so excited. And I'm up there peeing my pants, trying to low-key play it off, you know, like, ah, happy, you know freaking out and but you know for the most part it was a really cool experience getting to do that and getting to still serve those people on sunday morning like you know i we normally do and and to see the kids smiling and the families all together down there so that was a really awesome uh, experience so what are some of y'all's experiences you know growing up as pks hey well let me tell you my experience growing up as a pk is strictly this one right here embarrassing my dad on easter sunday you know, oh everybody, I know it, everybody expect the pastor's kid to be able to know and do everything good. But I remember on Easter, I never would completely learn my Easter speech. Never. I would never learn the whole speech. So on Sunday mornings when I would get up to do my speech, I would be kind of like, Jesus rose. And I'm looking over to the side for somebody <laughs> to tell me the next line. And on... Uh, and then, then they'll just tell me, just say Happy Easter, everybody. I would say, Happy Easter, everybody. <laughs> hey, Chris, honestly, though, like, real talk, I don't think much has changed about you. Yeah. Like, you <laughs> <laughs> like, this is still you to this day. Like, on Sunday morning, you'll be going through the announcements on stage, and you'll be like, and we have prayer coming up on Friday, Saturday. What, what day? Somebody tell me, what day? What day? <laughs> He's That's still along with the worship team, you know, if he's kind of up there in the background, he's trying to like get the worship team to keep going or something. He like don't know the words. I noticed he's like <laughs> screen trying to like go along. Like I'm like, Chris, we just sang this song. Like, how do you not remember the lyrics? See, yeah. Let me tell you, both of y'all are on my list now. Oh. I don't know what list it is, but I'm putting both of y'all on some kind of list where I'm going to get y'all back for this, okay? We love <laughs> but seriously, you. seriously, though, man, let me tell you, when we get through with all the Easter speeches and all that, it was all about family for us. I'm telling you, man, we would just get together. My mom would cook, and we would just have a great time just enjoying the family every Easter. So once we get through with service, hey, we were ready to celebrate then, guys. That's awesome. So... Was y'all service like at a regular like 10 o'clock service or yeah? yeah? See, it must be like a Mexican thing or something because <laughs> I had to get up for a sunrise service. We had to get up at 4.30 a.m. to go to a 5 o'clock service. Y'all don't have to do this? No. No. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay, so we had to wake up really early. And, you know, as kids, you're like, oh, my God, 4.30. And so we would get up. I remember my sister would like religiously, she'd just, she'd get to church, lay herself out on the pew and just like go to sleep. <laughs> and so y'all had it good. Um, oh, yeah. That was my experience as a, as a pastor's kid. But the really cool thing that I liked was that every time we would do our sunrise service, after that, we would all go to uh, this person's house that had a pool and we would do baptisms. And so that was really special because, you know, baptisms are a big deal as it is, but when it's on Easter, it just has a whole different feel. And so to be able to remember what Christ did for us and then to be able to get baptized and publicly show everybody that, you know, you have made that step in your faith is just amazing. And that's probably my favorite memory of Easter. And then after, you know, all that we would go to a park and do like our easter egg hunt my dad would always barbecue that was that was awesome i i know you said your mom would cook chris what would your mom cook um regular food <laughs> we just have regular food what what's regular food <laughs> food chris hot dog and potato chips no no <laughs> we didn't have no my mom would cook just like almost like thanksgiving food i mean she would just cook a big feast almost like dressing and stuff and then all the all the extra stuff that we have with it and we would just spread it out and eat yeah that's usually what my mimi did we had something similar to thanksgiving just a big dinner for all the family and and hanging out of course mimi's cooking is like the absolute best you know we i love that and doing our easter egg hunts was always fun growing up as kids and but at mimi's house we got money in our eggs oh 
you know, I mean, it was only a few bucks, dollars, you know, but like, you know, as kids, it's a lot of money to us. So, but you know, if you find a little, if you find a super, a, an egg that's like super light, you knew there's money in there because candy don't feel like that in the egg. Mm. I I'm, mean, I'm going to do that. Like an adult version though, like with the $50 bill in there, like. Right. And like, like, yeah, the golden egg, it was like the golden egg. So what about yeah. Easter baskets? Do you guys hey, tell, tell, tell pastor that he would put $50 in my egg. I'll come join y'all. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. What about Easter baskets? Did you guys do Easter baskets? Hey, I'm glad you said that. I got an Easter basket for you guys. I made one specially for you. Oh. Let me grab it. All right. So this is our new Easter basket. Oh, my God. Got the sanitized gloves in it. <laughs> Something everybody is looking for. Toilet paper. You're, you're crazy. And you got to have this sanitizer. So, hey, I got my basket ready. <laughs> Oh, that's hilarious. Would you get an Easter basket, Bree? No, I don't. I didn't get one this year. I think the Easter bunny skipped me this year, but it's okay. He's got Corona. <laughs> Next time. I think he's glad I threw his eggs out of a helicopter last year, so. <laughs> awesome. Well, um, I know that Easter this year looks different. I mean, Typically at our church at CLC, we will do like the helicopter egg drop or we'll have like a little festival for the kids where we have like the bounce houses, the face painting, all that. And we just don't have that this year. But I am so grateful for the means of technology to be able to still connect with everybody. And, you know, I think that it isn't by accident that this pandemic is happening right around Easter time. Um, you know how Pastor James will tell us that there's a lot of people that are CEOs. They go to church only on Christmas and on Easter only. And so I think that right now, not only are people going to want to go to church or, or see a church service online because it's Easter, but people are looking for hope right now. People are looking for anything that'll bring them relief from their fear and their anxiety. And so we have that opportunity as a church to be able to spread the gospel like never before. We have the power of just the click of a share, the click, the click of a like, or even to be able to, uh, you know, tag a friend on a post. So if you're watching right now, share our link, hit a uh, comment and, and sh uh, tag somebody that you know that could really benefit from watching our service. And so I'm so excited that here in 2020 we are able to spread the gospel and and just connect with so many people and i know that today's service god's going to move through our worship and through pastor james speaking and so chris if you would would you pray over everybody who's watching pray over the word and that god would just do something amazing today through our service absolutely and would you guys join in and pray with me Father God, who art in heaven, God, we love you and we honor you and we praise you, God. And we know that you hear us when we pray, God. You're the ruler of the whole world, of everything, God. We learned just a couple of weeks ago from our pastor that you have the whole world in your hand, God. And even just last week, God, we learned that through prayer, you will strengthen us, God. And we love you and we honor you for that, God. We just thank you for everything that you're doing. God, we pray even right now for those who need your healing hand to touch their body from this terrible disease. And God, even those who need your healing hands to touch their mind that are stricken with fear and worry. God, we love you and we honor you and we know that you have us in your hand, God. And please, God, help us, God, to not only hear physically what you're saying, but to hear in the spirit, not only to see physically what's going on, but to see spiritually what is going on. And God, even right now, I pray for our pastor as he delivered the word, not only our pastors, but pastors all over the world today that are delivering the word. I pray for them today. And even the service, not only our service, but services all over the world. God, I pray that your hand be right there in the middle of them, God. We honor you. We praise you. And God, will serve you all the days of our life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Happy Easter, guys. Yeah, happy Easter. We sure do miss you. And we love you so much. We hope you have an amazing day. Yeah, happy Easter, you guys. Again, we're so thankful that you joined us online today. We get to celebrate today with you guys.
praising him. Hallelujah. We give you glory. We give you honor, God. Hallelujah. Mountains are still being moved. Strongholds are still being loosed. God, we believe. Cause yes, we can see it. The wonders are still what you do. And bodies are still being raised. Come on and celebrate. Giants are still being slain. God, we believe. And yes, we can see it. The wonders are still working. We are here for you. Come and do what you do.
Hallelujah. Come on, somebody give a shout to God this morning on Resurrection Sunday. Let's celebrate together. God's not dead. I said God's not dead. He is alive and well this morning. Give him praise right there in your living room. Give him praise right there on your iPad or on your iPhone. Come on, give him a shout this morning. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. Welcome this morning. Those of you who are watching online, we welcome you on Easter Sunday. Can you believe it? I know it's a little different uh, than what we're used to, but you know what? We're not going to stop having church. God is moving. We just sang that song, This is a Move, and I believe that it is, is exactly what is taking place. This is a move of God that is going to be unprecedented. That more, I'm telling you, we're going to see God do incredible miracles in our nation and in our land through this whole ordeal. And I just want to welcome you here today. I promise you, God's still in the healing business. That's why He went to the cross. He says, by His stripes, we are healed. And I'm just believing today. Yeah, I'm believing today with this this virus that we're dealing with, I'm believing today that God is going to move across this land and begin to bring a complete and total healing. And we pray for that and we believe that today that all over the world, God, we believe in your power. We believe in your healing strength here today. And I just pray for healing across our land, across our nation, healing us physically, not only healing us physically, but Lord, I pray for a spiritual healing. I pray for a revival in this land, God, that we would put ourselves back under you, that we would truly be one nation under God again, God. So we come to you today, and we ask you, Lord, we, we ask you to come and bring healing to our land, healing to our lives, healing to our homes. We pray this in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, we may be challenged with the virus, and I know it's a terrible thing that we've had to face, but I'm going to tell you it's not the greatest challenging virus that ever came. The greatest virus that we have among us is the virus of sin. But the good news is we have a cure for it. Here we are on Resurrection Sunday. I can't help but think that when they took Jesus to the cross, and they begin to crucify him. And the blood and the sweat begin to run down his body. The Bible says there's power in his blood. There's power in the blood of Jesus. You know why? Because it represents a life. It represents a life for life. You couldn't be living right now if you didn't have blood flowing through your body. And so God came himself and wrapped himself in flesh. And he gave himself for you. And for me, and can I tell you how much power was in that blood? I, I can't even describe in the human language because if you understood how powerful our God is that we serve, He is an infinite God. He is a limitless God. He knows no end and no beginning. You cannot capture Him in time and space. He's greater than what our minds can even fathom. And here's what happened on that day when they crucified him and that blood began to run. Can I tell you, all the power of God was wrapped into that atonement that he made for you. Every bit of power came for the cure of sin so that you might have life again. And not only that, yes, they killed him. I'm going to tell you, he died on a Friday, but on a Sunday morning, he even defeated death. He defeated death in the grave, and he rose again, and he's here with us this morning. He's with us. He's all around us. He's behind us. He's for us. I'm telling you, you serve a God this morning that has come to set you free. Amen, amen. What a wonderful day. Thank you for joining us online. I just pray that you are blessed today and that you feel the presence of God in your home. Just worship Him right there and just let God do a work in your life. Amen. And I just, I'm going to go ahead and say, you know what? If you don't know Jesus, 
I can't think of a better day than to let me introduce him, him to you this morning. It's not hard. It's not difficult. All you got to do is invite him in your life. All you got to do is say, Lord, I believe that you went to a cross. I believe that you died on a cross for my sins. And so I want to repent. I want to turn my ways. I want to stop going my way and go your way. I want to submit my life completely under your authority. And I'm going to tell you, it's not being put into prison. It's actually going to set you free. So if you'll just accept in him and believe in him today, the Bible says, if you'll just confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, you shall be saved. And so I believe that that's going to happen to you today. Amen. Look, if you're watching online today, won't you click and share on Facebook Live, click and share on uh, YouTube and invite somebody to join you right now watching online. I'm telling you, you've got a circle of friends out there that need Jesus this morning and you would be surprised to say, hey, come watch this with me and let's believe God's going to do something great. Amen. I'm going to ask my ushers to come this morning and obviously we've been saying this every week. We know that they're not really coming here, but they're coming to your house digitally. Amen. And uh, thank you for your continued giving and support. Obviously, your support helps move the ministry forward. And uh, not only that, it sets you free. It sets you free. And so I just pray that you keep giving. I pray the Lord bless you. Bless your home, your jobs. I know some of you may be struggling with a job right now. I'm believing that God's going to provide the need. He said He would. He said he would, and we have to trust him this morning. So thank you for your giving. I will tell you there's several ways to give. First of all, you can give on our app. Uh, if you have that on your phone, many of you are doing that now. Uh, and if you don't have it, you can go online and do that. Secondly, you can give online. Uh, go to our website and do it that way. Uh, or if you want to mail it to us, go to our P.O. box. Uh, you can find that on our website. Uh, and then the last way is text to give text to give. And if you want to text us, you can text 84321. 84321 and put the dollar sign and the amount and either the word offering or tithe. And if you're not set up, it will set you up and get you started in that direction. But I just want to thank you. Debbie and I want to thank you from the bottom of our hearts for continuing to, su to support CLC, support this ministry. We believe that God has called us for such a time as this. I really believe that with all my heart. And I believe that there's a window of opportunity right now for our church to reach our community, to reach our city. How many of you want to help me reach people? Come on, raise your hand. You want to help me reach people. I know you may be in your home right now, but I'm believing. I pray God lay a passion on your heart to help us reach people for Jesus. Amen. God bless you this morning. Thank you for being with us. I want you to watch the screens. Well, welcome everybody. Thanks for tuning in on Easter Sunday. So glad to have each one of you. Some of you are on Facebook. Some of you are on YouTube and we're even on Instagram live today. Uh, so glad that you joined us and tuned in. And I trust that God has already moved into your home through our worship. And uh, I would ask you of one favor. If you've tuned in, uh, why don't you invite somebody right now if you already, if you haven't already, you know, just hit the share button. Show this message to them because you never know what God's going to do, especially right here on Easter Sunday morning. We are celebrating the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, and we have victory, victory over sin, victory over death. We have more life more abundantly now because of what He has done for us. Amen, somebody? 
So uh, share that message with them. Also, I want you to get your Bibles out real quickly, and we're going to go to Romans chapter 5, and we're going to begin with verse 5. And if you look, I'm going to, I'm going to go old fashioned for a minute. If you get your, get your actual Bible out, if you can, and uh, I want you to read with me. Not only do I want you to read with me, I want you, I know you're probably in your pajamas and you're relaxed and you got your coffee, but would you just honor the word this morning, maybe by standing up in your living room as we read the word? I just, I just think it's more effective if we all participate together. And uh, maybe you have your phones, you're reading your Bible on your phones, but go to Romans 5, verse 5, and then we're going to go to 1 John 4, okay? But uh, while you're getting that ready, let, let me just say this. Debbie and I miss you guys so much. And uh, our heart is heavy right now because we just want to give you a hug, and we can't wait to the day that we can all gather again in this place and uh, it's going to be a huge celebration when we do. But just know that we, pray, we are praying for you. We miss you. And we can't wait to be with you again. It's just going to be a great hug fest when we come back together. All right, go to Romans chapter 5, verse 5. It says this. Read it with me. Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. For when we were still, notice, when we were still without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet per, perhaps for a good man someone would even dare to die. But here's verse 8. Notice this. But God demonstrates. He demonstrates His own love towards us that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Now jump to 1 John chapter 4 and let's read verse 9. It says, this is how God showed His love among us. He sent His one and only Son into the world that we might live, notice, through Him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Let's pray together. Father, we thank You for Your Word today. I pray, Lord, that You would give me the ability to articulate Your Word to be clear, to speak with boldness and clarity. And I pray the Holy Spirit would move through me, anoint my mind and my mouth so that they might receive a word from you today. Open their spiritual ears and eyes today, God. And I pray for whoever's watching, they would be open to receive what you have for them today. In Jesus' name, everybody said an amen. My title of my message today is, God, I just need a sign. I just need a a sign. I mean, have you ever asked God for a sign? I mean, like, I just need a sign, God. I mean, I mean, like, I mean, if, if you're about to get married or you're wanting to get married, you're like, I just need to, I need a sign that this is the right one. I just need a sign. Now, you can't ask that question after you're already married, guys, okay? Can't do it. Can't do it. But we, we want a sign. Maybe, maybe it's in your relationships. Maybe it's in your job. You know, is this the right thing for me? I mean, maybe you're, it's a business deal. Maybe it's in the middle of this pandemic. God, I just need a sign. And as crazy as it sounds, you know, like when I was younger, I used to go out in my parents' driveway. We had a basketball goal. And I'd be like, okay, God, okay, I need a sign. If, if I make three hoops in a row from the three-point line, I'll know. I'll know for sure. And I began one. Yes. Two. <laughs> made that one. Three. Bump. And then I start lowering the standards. Okay, God. Okay. Uh, three out of five. Three out of five. And, and that's what we do. I mean, we go outside at night. And we're like, God, just show me a shooting star. I mean, if I could just have a sign, if I get all green lights on my way to work today, I'll have a sign. And why, why is it that we want a sign? I'll tell you why, but it's because we want to know for sure. We want to have this assurance. But if there's one thing that you need to know today, without a shadow of a doubt, one thing that you need to conclude with all of your heart that you need to resolve is that there is a God that loves you. And I want you to hear me today. People are asking, you know, today, you know, is, if there's a God, I mean, does he really even love us? I mean, even uh, Christians, sometimes we ask that questions. I mean, we're like, sure, well, God says he loves me. But when we start hitting challenging times like this, when we start going through a trial, we can even question and we can conclude that maybe God's just, you know, he's trying to discipline me. 
I mean, I, I mean, my parents, you know, they used to discipline us. And, you know, I mean, and matter of fact, uh, every once in a while, you know, we didn't just get spankings. In Texas, we get whippings. You know, you're going to get a whipping, boy. I mean, matter of fact, in my, my parents' uh, food pantry, we would walk in there and there was a reminder every day of the authority of the house because there was a razor strap hanging on the wall. And if you don't know what that is, that's what barbers use to uh, sharpen their razor. And it's made of three straps of letter. And matter of fact, when, when you get a whipping with that, it sounds worse than what it really is. Because all three uh, of those leather straps are like, da da da, da da da. I mean, it's loud. And I mean, you would think somebody is beating you to death. But I, I never forget that my parents, when they would do that, I mean, even my mom would get it a good old fashioned uh, pair switch. And, and boy, I hated those things. But they would always say, son, this is going to hurt me more than it's going to hurt you. And I'd look at them. I'd be like, that's a lie. That's a lie. <laughs> but uh, here's the thing. We, sometimes we think God's dis, you know, putting us through some sort of discipline. And at one time or another, we've asked God, you know, does he really like me? Does he really even love me? We've been to that place and we just need to know for sure. And it would be great if we just had a sign. And I mean, because sometimes we live our lives like, you know, picking flower petals. You know, it's like today he loves me. Today he doesn't love me. He loves me. He loves me not. I mean, imagine what that would feel like if you did that uh, uh, every day of your life. Because if you're not careful, you're, you're going to be on this roller coaster of uncertainty. And it's an unstable place to be. It's a challenging place to be. I mean, imagine if it worked that way in your marriage. If one day you felt like they loved you, your spouse loved you. Two days from now, man, I don't think they love me at all. I mean, we're not even talking. Imagine if, if your children felt that way. Like one day they felt loved and then the next week they felt like, man, my parents don't even care. They don't, they don't even love me. I mean, what kind of effect would that have on them? What kind of effect would it have on your marriage and on your children? I'm telling you, it would affect them greatly. And that's why it's so critical that we, we get this Bible out and we understand because it begins to paint a clear picture of the love of God. Because if I, listen, if I know that God loves me, man, I can do anything. I can make it through anything. I, can, I don't care what comes against me. If I know that I have a Heavenly Father that loves me, I can do anything. But if I don't think that and I question that, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to live with uncertainty. I'm going to live with insecurity. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm, my strength is going to be gone. I'll be frustrated. And here's what happens. I begin to try to perform for God to get him to like me and love me. And I'm going to tell you, that's an exhausting place for anybody to live. And so I've come here to tell you today, we have to come to the conclusion that there is a God that not only likes me, but he loves me. Well, how do we know, pastor? How do we know this? How do I know for sure? Is there a sign? Yes, there is a sign. There is a way to know for sure, but it's not based on you and your performance and getting everything right. If you're trying to perform, let me tell you something. Good luck with that because you're going to end up exhausted and old before your time. But there is a sign. It's not a basketball hoop. It's not a green light. It is God's Son. That's what we're celebrating today. He has given us the most unbelievable, undeniable sign. And it is His Son, Jesus. He sent His Son to be a sign to forever settle for all of human history that there is a God that's, that's not only interested in you, He's not just contemplating your existence. No, but He loves you and He likes you. And that, my friend, is the message of Easter. That's why we're celebrating. And this is the message I want the world to hear right now, that there is a God who went to a cross he, he, and he died on a cross for your sin and he was resurrected. And it's a sign to us that was settled for all time, for all people, that God loves us and that he's obsessed with us and he wants a relationship with us. In Romans chapter 5, that we just read in verses 5 through 8, he begins to explain this and expound on it about God's love. And, and really, this text comes to the rescue of anybody who has ever doubted that there is a God who loves you. Romans chapter 5, he says, Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. He said, you're not going to be disappointed because the Holy Spirit's going to come. And that maybe that's what some of you are feeling right now. You're like, I don't know this emotion. No, it's not an emotion. It's the Holy Spirit wooing you, saying, I've been trying to love on you. I've been, I'm going to rescue you. And, and he says, it's going to come and it's going to reassure you. 
And then verses 6 through 8, he begins to paint and this picture and describe the love of God. And he, ex- he starts explaining the death of Christ. Look at verse 6. He says, For when we were still without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. When we were still without strength. That means when we were still without knowledge of Him, when we were still without ability, without faith. I mean, we weren't even cognizant of God. We, we didn't even care about God. We were selfish. We were given over to ourselves. And in, even in this state of mind, at the right time, Christ went ahead and died. Can I tell you, 2,000 years ago, He went ahead and died before you were even born. He knew you would be born. He knew you would be born in sin. He knew we would be born in a sin nature. But He went to a cross and He died for all your sins at that point. For all of us. And then in verse 7, he begins to contrast this divine love versus human love. Look, for, look at verse 7. He says, For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. I mean, rarely is a, a righteous man going to take a bullet for you. He said, Yet perhaps for a good man, someone would even dare to die. I mean, but it's unlikely. I mean, you have a God. I'm going to tell you who loves us. And, you know, when I was getting married, I didn't have to beg my wife to walk down that aisle. I remember that day when she came through those doors. She looked so beautiful. And we were in love with each other. I mean, I didn't have to beg her to come to me. But listen, God made a covenant with a bride who hadn't even shown up to the wedding. And he's standing there and, you know, it's like, well, how long are you going to stand here? I mean, she hadn't showed up. I mean, how long are you going to wait? And God's just standing there saying, as long as it takes. But we got a crowd here, don't you see? There's, there's people, I mean, really? How long are you going to stay here? I mean, really? I mean, th- these people are getting weary. I mean, we're waiting on somebody that hadn't even showed up. And God says, I'm not moving. I'm still waiting. Because even while they didn't even know who I was or acknowledge me, I'm still waiting. What kind of groom does that? See, our culture would say, you're an idiot. You're crazy. Go find, some, go find a girl that'll love you back, man. I mean, nobody stands at the end of the aisle. I mean, who does that? And can I tell you, only Jesus. He does it. Look at Romans 5 and verse 8. It says, but God demonstrates. He's given us a sign. He demonstrates His own love toward us in that while we were still away. When we didn't even stand at the end of the aisle, we're still sinners. He went ahead and died. Can I tell you, that's not human love, folks. That's not human love. I mean, that's called agape love. The Bible calls it agape love, which we have no concept of. We can't even, we, we can't even, we're not wired for that because it's not human. This love is, is the kind of love that's from another realm. It's from another uh, dimension. It's from another solar system, galaxy. And it's a love that really we are unfamiliar with as human beings. It's a heavenly love. And I define it like this. Agape is a love that is, that is at, extended, never expecting nothing in return. It is never ending, never ceasing, unrelenting and unconditional. That's God's love. Does he love you? See, the English word that we use for love doesn't even do it justice, but he loves you. It's agape. He said, while you were even turned away from me, when you didn't even show up to the wedding, I still came and I died for you. And I'm telling you, I've come to remind you today on Easter Sunday morning to assure you that no matter where you are, no matter where your life is, no matter where you stand or what your emotions are telling you or how far you've run for God, there is a God that still loves you and He's pursuing you. How do I know? Because He sent His Son who was brutally beaten and He was crucified on a cross. And it's God screaming all over again, this is how crazy I am about you. I love you. And listen, every person on this earth is a child of God. Whether they found children or lost children. God created us all. He has some found kids and He has some lost kids. And it's very clear in the scripture in Luke chapter 15 that God is concerned and He's distracted about His lost kids. He tells three stories. The lost coin, the lost sheep, and about the lost son. All three times. The story ends the very same way. He, sees, he would leave the one that He's found just to go to find the one that's lost. Why? Because that's how God feels. 
And see, if you've ever lost anything of value, you would understand. I mean, I remember several years ago when Brittany, uh, my oldest daughter, who's now almost 22 years old tomorrow, uh, she, she was about three or four years old. And we go to uh, New Braunfels, Tex Texas, and we go to the Guadalupe, uh, uh, the Slitterbond water park there. And we were sitting there and, and the kids, I'm holding the two boys, they're just babies. And Brittany's sliding down this slide. And every time she'd go to the slide, it would take about 10 seconds we wouldn't see her because she'd go behind some rocks to climb up and had a line to go through. And I'm sitting there watching and sure enough, I mean, we're, we're, we're sitting there having a good time. And all of a sudden I, I realized I hadn't seen Brittany in a couple minutes. And so I got up and I began to look around. I walked around the back of that slide. She wasn't there. I'm looking around and folks, this place is packed out. There's like a, a thousand people or more at this place, probably where we were. And I mean, it's just like a sea of people and there there was a wave pool not too far away and it wasn't like your regular wave pool it actually had river water it had the Guadalupe river water in it so it wasn't clear and so I began to panic a little bit and I run up to the to the uh, uh, lifeguard that uh, was on staff that day and I said hey man I, I can't find my little girl and he goes and, he, and here he's about I don't know 15 16 years old he goes well, what do you want me to do about it Boy, I'm about to yank you off that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you what to do. I said, first thing you need to do is call the front because I don't know if somebody's taking my little girl. You tell them you don't let anybody leave right now. Secondly, you come on down there and you help me find my little girl and you get your radio and you call everybody. And he's looking at me like, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, and I'm going to tell you, I began to panic a little bit because I didn't see anybody. So I just stopped. I felt the Holy Spirit say, stop. And I just cried out to God. I said, Lord, you got to help me find my baby girl. And I'm not kidding, I opened my eyes and it was like the Red River, or re the Red Sea parted. And I looked across and I saw my little girl walking down into that wave pool and she had no life jacket on. And I'm telling you, you never seen, I mean, I was faster than a speeding bullet. Ran over there, grabbed my little girl. I mean, I hugged on her. I mean, I, you know why? Because I was not about to stop searching until I found her. I was going to search because I was on a mission. And I believe that God feels the same way about his lost kids. I mean, and if you don't know him today, I'm going to tell you, he still loves you. He's searching for you because something he wants is missing. I mean, there was never a time when I was looking for Brittany that I was like, well, you know what? I got other kids, you know, two out of three ain't bad. I mean, God doesn't do that. No, when we have something of value that's missing, we will do it what's, uh, everything that we can. Why? Because of love. And that's how God feels about you. And so I want to, talk to even some Christians today because this is not just for people who are lost this is for people who have been found but yet there may be some confusion because the truth is there's times in our walk with God that we still wonder we still wonder if God loves us why <laughs> because we still struggle I mean, nobody would even ask that question if God loves us, if our performance was always good, if it was great. I mean, uh, we would know without a shadow of a doubt that we were pleasing to God because, you know, we're perfect. We're perfect at the perfect package and we're all that, you know. But if we're honest, you know, we're none of us are like that. We're all a work in progress. We, we are a bundle of broken fragments in our life. And that's why every once in a while we begin to question, man, I've Man, if, God, if God's seeing my life right now, man, I don't, I don't know if he can love me. I don't know if he even likes me. But do you remember what it felt like the day you, you committed your life to God? Do you remember how awesome it felt and the joy you felt and you felt His presence? And, I mean, at that moment, you, nothing could go wrong. You were God's favorite. I mean, you're like, I am God's child. I mean, in that moment, you knew that He loved you no matter what. It's such a great feeling. But here's what happens. Over the process of time, we begin to trend back to our human default system, which is a performance-based system and, and and maybe it's because we got some bad interpretation of scripture we didn't understand it or maybe it's an inaccurate understanding of you know the new covenant of grace and we start to wonder where we are and if God loves us and it really hurts us but let me just tell you church let me tell you if you've given your life to Christ I'm going to tell you if you're going to be a missionary if you're going I mean if you're going to impact people and especially right now if you're going to impact people and, and if we're going to reach the city, we have to know one thing. We have to be a re reassured that there is a God that is still in love with you 
even when you fail. That's right. I mean, are you telling me that God likes me even when I mess up? Are you telling me that God's still in love with me even when I fall into sin? Let me tell you something. If God liked you two days ago before you sinned, He knew you were going to sin two days ago. I mean, God is not like man. He doesn't see life in time and space. God is not living every, every single day going, well, I'm wondering what they're going to do today. You know, I mean, whoo, I mean, you just never know about this guy. You know what I'm saying? Or this girl. Um, but, but God is... And let me just paint a picture. He's up in the helicopter, okay? He's, it's like watching a parade, but he's watching from up high. He sees it from the beginning to the end. He already knows the future. Really, all of your sins were future, if you think about it, because he died on the cross 2,000 years ago. He's not going to go back to the cross and die all over again. No, he's already died for every sin that you're ever going to commit. Think about that. He knows what's coming in your life. So if he likes you today, you can rest assured that he's going to like you a week from now. When you do something dumb, he's going to be there anyway. It's just the enemy is going to attack your mind and bring condemnation. <laughs> let, me, let me give you one little thought, and I'm trying to hurry. This is a powerful thing. If you don't write anything else down, write this down. We don't confess our sins in order to be forgiven. Oh, I got your attention. Let me say that again. We don't confess our sins in order to be forgiven. No, we confess our sins because we're already forgiven. You say, well, what about repentance? I need to repent. Repent means to do an about face. Repent means I'm doing something going away from God. I'm living my own life and I need to do an about face and turn towards God. No, when I say confession, I'm talking about being open with God. I'm not just saying going through a ritual. No, I'm talking about God. You see, you see where I am and you got to know, you got to know this will change you forever. I mean, it won't make you want to go sin no more. It'll make you get in tune with God. It'll change your whole motives will be like, man, he loves me that much. Absolutely. See, you don't have to go begging God for forgiveness. Some people think that you do. I mean, uh, but you got to know that you're already forgiven. Look at Hebrews 4.15. He says, for we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses. I mean, he understands, but was in all points tempted just as we are, yet he didn't commit sin at all. So let us, and here's, here's the promise, here's what he's telling you to do. So let us, therefore, come crawling, come confessing, come, you know, you know oh God, forgive me, and, and snotting all over, all, all over the place. No, he doesn't say that. Look what he says. So let us, therefore, come boldly, confident. Where? To the throne of grace that you may obtain mercy and find grace to help you in your time of need. Can let me tell you something. The only way that you can approach God's throne boldly is knowing that you're not facing judgment. It's knowing that you have obtained a mercy. You've obtained the mercy seat, mercy for your past, and you've obtained grace for right now and for your future. That's the only way. I mean, are there natural consequences to our sin and to our actions? Absolutely. You reap what you sow. That's a principle. I mean, you're not going to get around some of the consequences. I mean, it's just like my children. I mean, my kids know when they mess up, when they do something wrong, there's going to be consequences. But that doesn't mean I don't love them. That doesn't mean I don't forgive them. The truth is, don't tell them this, okay? It's a secret. The truth is, I've already forgiven them for tomorrow and the next day and the next day to the day I die or to the day the Lord comes back. I've already forgiven them. Why? I love my kids. And guess what? My love doesn't even compare to his love, his agape love that we, our human mind can't even comprehend. He loves you. That's just the enemy trying to beat you up saying, you know, make you with a guilty conscience. But the Bible says there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Look at 1 John chapter 2, and I'm going to come to a close. 1 John chapter 2, verse 1, it says, My dear ch children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. But, but <laughs> here's the key word, but if anybody does sin, we have an advocate. You have a lawyer. 
You have somebody that's taken your place with the Heavenly Father. Who was it? His name is Jesus Christ. And He is not anybody. It says He's the righteous one. He was the perfect one. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, not only for ours, but also the sin of every person in the world. He took your place. He stands in for you. See, when God the Father looks at Jesus or looks at you, He doesn't see you. He sees Jesus because you are hidden in Christ Jesus. We received His righteousness. We can never be good enough. We can never perform enough. And we have to know that we can approach God with no condemnation, no judgment. But all we receive, you know what we get? We get the blessing of righteousness because the Word of God establishes who we are in Christ. So no matter what your emotions say, no matter what your feelings are saying, I'm, I'm telling you, you got to know because the, the Bible tells us I have to know whose I am and who I am. I have to know who's standing in for me because I have to know that God loves me and that he's for me. He's not against me. See, when you are in Christ Jesus, the Father looks at you, but he sees his son. And man, does he love his son. You know, when I was a teenager, actually, I, a couple years after high school, I was trying to get direction with my life, really didn't know what I wanted to do. And I felt the call of God in my life, but I, honestly, I rebelled against it. And there was a time and period where I went through a very rebellious stage. Ended up moving out of my parents' house. We had disagreements. And I moved out for six or eight months. I was gone, and I, I, I may have talked to my parents once or twice during that six or eight month period. And honestly, it was killing me on the inside because I'd never had a problem with my parents. Never had I not talked to them, but I was just stubborn headed. I was doing my own thing. I went and lived it up. I did what I wanted to do. And it came to a point where I got tired. I was like, okay, this party and stuff, this, man, this is ain't all, all it's cracked up to be. I got to find something. I got to do something with my life, you know. And about that time, I got a letter in the mail from my dad. And I opened that letter and I began to read it and I could feel his heart. He began to tell me how much he loved me. And he reminded me of the story of the prodigal son in the Bible and how the son took all of his belongings, his inheritance, and he went and he spent it all and he ended up in a pig pen and he begged to come back. He's like, if I could just be a servant in my father's house, that's all I would ask for. I mean, he realized that he really had nothing. We know the story. It's a beautiful picture of our father in heaven, how he welcomed him home. And I, I read that and... He said, James, I just want you to know how much I love you, son. And I'll always be here for you. And I'm going to tell you, that day, that day I started packing my bags. I was miserable. I was ready for something better. And I packed my bags, and I drove home to my parents' house. And I'll never forget walking in that back door. I smelt my mom's cooking, first of all. Whew. Thank you, Jesus. My dad was sitting in his normal place at the dinner table. With, he actually had his back to me, but he heard me come in the door. He had seen me drive up. And he pushed that, I can still hear that kitchen chair pushing back across that floor. And he turned around. He had big tears running down his eyes. My mom stopped what she was doing. They both came over and just hugged me. And we just... I mean, it was like the longest, greatest hug. And the words my dad said, he said, Welcome home, son. Welcome home. We all need love. See, that's what the Heavenly Father's trying to do for some of you. Some of you have run from him. Some of you have felt guilty. Some of you don't even, haven't even known that there's a God that loves you. I'm telling you, there's a God that loves you. And here on Easter Sunday, he's saying, come home. I don't care where you've been. I don't care what you've done. I don't care what you got going on in your life. I'm telling you, just come home. 
Because I'm going to tell you something that I felt when I walked in my parents' house, there was peace. I mean, there's peace. I just felt the sense, and that's a gift. There was love. You can't buy those things. And some of you, that's what you're looking for. You just need some peace. Your world is in a storm. You need some love. Just come home. Because the Heavenly Father's got His arms open wide this morning. He sent His Son. He said, here's, here's your sign. This is how much I love you. I want you to bow your head right there with me if you're watching today. If you don't know Jesus and you've never met Him, I pray that you feel the presence of God in your home right now. I feel Him even here. Listen, it's, it, this gospel thing is not complicated. I say it like this, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life. We say it this way, God loved and God gave. That was His part. Our part is we believe and we receive. That's the gospel in a nutshell. You just got to believe in your heart that there is a God and that He sent His Son for you, that He died for you so that you might have life. Say, so, Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for sending me your message to remind me of how much you love me. That you sent your Son to die on a cross for my sin even when I didn't believe. But today... I confess with my mouth and in my heart that you are my Lord and my Savior. I repent today. I'm going to change the direction I'm going, living my selfish life, and I'm going to come home. And I'm going to follow you. Come into my life. Be my Lord and Savior from this day forward. In Jesus' name. Everybody say amen. Come on, can you just give the Lord some praise right now? Come on, let's worship Him together. Father, we love you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your word today, God. Thank you for your, lo your love and your love for us. And I pray for all of you who are watching. Listen, don't let this day pass by. you got to realize God's not out to get you. He's out to love you. And He just wants you to come home. Thank you for watching today. Just know that Debbie and I are praying for all of you. And I'm believing that the presence of God is going to give you peace today. Listen to me. You need peace that passes all understanding. I speak peace. I speak health. I speak life. We speak healing in our land. All of those who are sick right now, Lord, we pray for a quick recovery. We pray for an end to this pandemic. Lord, we just pray for all of those who are working on the front lines. We ask you for your help, mighty God. Speak into our lives. And whatever, whatever we're going through right now, we just got to know that you are in, char in charge and you are in control. We love you. Listen, friend, tune back in next Sunday. Keep tuned online. Invite somebody to come with you because somebody needs to hear the message of hope. Just know that we love you. We're praying for you. God bless you and have a wonderful Easter Sunday. We'll see you next week. Thank you again for joining us online today. We hope you enjoyed today's message. Make sure to stay connected with us, turn on your notifications, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and check out our website. We'll see you next week.